Hello scientific brilliant people how are you today so today i'm going to continue our discussion on resistances in parallel and the most important factor that people doesn't understand is why the potential difference across all the resistors they remain same correct so in depth we are going to discuss that so before our discussion let me first of all show you a simple parallel connection of two resistors so people this is a carbon resistor right this is available in the market and it is very cheap this is made up of carbon and uh, it has got several color codings on it and this resistor has got two ends in the same way another resistor having two ends like this and now this is a battery this is the positive terminal of the battery and this this is not actually a battery but this is a cell and it is i think 1.5 volt cell and this cell has potential difference 1.5 volts across both the ends both the terminals so what am i going to do is i'm going to connect this end with this end with this and this end with this end with this so the current going from here will be divided into two parts then both the current will again join together and come back like this so that is a very simple parallel connection i'm not going to actually join it but it is a way to understand that how the parallel connection works right so now let's move on with our theory part people so let's understand first of all the circuit diagram that what is parallel connection so here we have three resistances r1 r2 and r3 all three are connected in parallel you can see that both the arms both the arms and both the arms are connected with each other and this is a battery whose potential difference is v and the longer terminal of the battery is positive shorter one is negative correct but before i even go into this part people let me give you a very small uh, very small talk on a battery this is a battery and suppose this is 10 volt this is positive terminal this is negative terminal this is the actual battery whereas the symbol of the battery is like this now <clears throat> it means that this positive terminal is at higher voltage that is plus 10 volt and this negative terminal is at a lower voltage that is 0 volt now the difference between these two potential is called potential difference so you can also assume this has 20 and this has 10 even though the difference is 10 so this 10 volt is the difference in the potential of this and this and we consider the positive terminal to be at higher potential correct people you can even consider this as plus 5 and this is minus 5 even the difference stays as 10 volt now this is again a 10 volt battery over here so this is at 10 volt this is at 0 volt now this 10 volt is directly connected over here so that means this will also be at 10 volt and this 0 is connected directly to this terminal of the resistance so this will be at a zero volt so that means the potential difference across this resistance will again be 10 volts and the current will always move from high potential to low potential so that means the current will move in this direction so that means the current will come out like this and it will enter into the battery now people have misunderstanding that the current decreases when it passes through the resistor no it is not true whatever current comes out the same current must come in the battery that's what i have mentioned in the points to remember that current never decreases while it passes through the resistance so the energy contained in the um, the current decreases so we will talk about that shortly and here we have made few assumptions that the battery has no internal resistance the connecting wires are also at zero resistance which is practically not possible but theoretically it's fine to talk about this point over here now same thing over here now since we know a very brief thing about the battery let's apply it over here so which means people the potential difference across these two terminals is v so i'm going to consider this as v and this as zero so that means the potential difference is v now this v is connected over here so here also the potential is v this v is connected over here so here potential is v and this v is directly connected over here so here also the potential is v correct and this zero is connected over here this zero is connected over here 
this zero is connected over here so as you can see that the potential difference is v potential difference is v potential difference is v and these three are the voltmeters voltmeters they always show you the potential difference between the terminals where it is actually connected right okay so as you can see that in parallel connection the battery voltage is itself the potential difference across all the resistors now we assume that <clears throat> say i is the current conventional current coming out so same current must come in the battery from the other side now this current will split up into three parts say i1 i2 i3 this is just like people the flow of water through a very bigger pipe so you can consider this as a very big pipe then it channelizes into three small pipes so the entire volume of water will be divided into three parts correct and then again these three parts will be added up together to form again a big pipe so again these the water from these three pipes will be adding up to form the same amount of water which came out of the battery actually so that means this will be the i3 again as i said that the current doesn't decrease when it passes through the resistance it remains the same this is again i2 current coming out will be i1 and again all of them will be added up together to form i now here i have made an assumption that r1 is the largest resistance out of all three see people it is just a human nature that we don't like to go through a path which is full of obstacles so if from your home to your office or from your home to the school if there are five paths available we will always take the shortest path with very less obstacles so current also thinks in the same way the current will pass through that resistance where the resistance is the least so majority of the current will pass through r3 correct because it is the least resistance so it maximum amount of current will pass through this and the least amount of current will pass through this but there is no possibility that zero current will pass through this one no small current will do pass through resistance r1 so now we know that the total current i is equal to the sum of all the currents in all the resistors i1 i2 and i3 now another thing people whatever I, what i have done is i have made an equivalent circuit like this equivalent circuit means i have removed these three resistors r1 r2 and r3 and i have put only a single resistor which is req such that the current coming out doesn't change the battery voltage doesn't change all situation must remain the same but we are removing these three resistor with a single resistor correct so same is the current coming out i is the current coming out now this current i will pass through the equivalent resistance and it will again come back now as i said that this is again v voltage so this is v this is zero so this zero is connected over here this v is connected over here so again the potential difference is v so now if you apply ohm's law in this part so v is equal to i3 into r3 v is equal to i2 into r2 because the product of current and resistance is displayed in the voltmeter so i1 into r1 is v over here also i into r eq is v so let's note down all the points over here people so v is equal to i1 r1 same v is equal to i2 r2 and from this circuit v is equal to i into r equivalent so from here if i find out the value of i1 that will be equal to v by r1 so that v by r1 is i1 so i'm going to substitute it over here so v upon r1 plus here the value of i2 is v upon r2 that i'm going to put it over here plus v upon r3 and from here v by r eq is the value of total current as you can see that i can strike out this v so i get a very important relationship 1 upon r eq that is equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 so that means if you add all the resistances in parallel it has to be added like this now one more important thing that i would like to say 
here the current out of these all current i1 i2 and i3 the highest current will be i3 because the resistance is the lowest so in this way i can write down i3 larger than i2 and the least current will be i1 higher the resistance lower will be the current in that section but the potential difference across all the resistors remains the same now people we have approached almost the end of our class but i would like to tell you a very important thing related to the parallel connection because majority of the video lectures they never talk about this part okay so here i am going to talk about the parallel connection with the help of energy conservation see now i know that we have two resistors which are connected in parallel as i said that this can be written as 12 volt this can be written as 0 volt so 12 minus 0 is 12 volt now this zero appears over here this zero appears over here this 12 appears over here as well as over here so that means if i connect a voltmeter like this i would be getting the potential difference as 12 volt again here the potential difference as 12 volt now if you directly want to calculate the current which is passing through the individual sections v is equal to ir so v is equal to i we don't know into r so 12 is equal to let me put it like this v is equal to i into r so voltage value is 12 that is equal to current i into 3 so that means current is equal to 4 ampere in this way so here it is sorry 4 ampere and in the same way here 6 twos are 12 so the current in this wing will be 2 ampere which means people the total current which is coming out is 6 ampere because 6 ampere will split up into 4 and 2 again 4 and 2 will add up to give 6 ampere and finally 6 ampere current will be back from the other side if you don't want to calculate in this way let's find out the equivalent resistance 1 upon req that is equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 so 1 upon req is equal to 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 6 so 1 upon req can be written as 2 upon 6 plus 1 upon 6 that means req that is equal to 2 ohm correct people so here 2 ohm is the equivalent resistance so i can even reduce this circuit like this that we have 2 ohm resistance as the equivalent resistance and we have 12 volt battery like this so v is equal to ir that means 6 ampere current is going to come out now this is okay but we are supposed to write this 12 volts as 12 joule per coulomb this 6 ampere as 6 coulomb per second because ampere is coulomb per second in the same way this 2 ampere as 2 coulomb per second this 4 ampere as 4 coulomb per second now this is very important people see this means one coulomb charge when it comes out of the positive terminal of the battery it receives 12 joules of energy from the battery now when it flows through the resistors and comes back it will lose 12 joules of energy while overcoming the resistance but here there are six coulomb charges which are coming out of the battery so that means six into 12 so it is going to receive 72 joules of energy from the battery so 6 coulomb charge will draw 72 coulomb of 72 joules of energy then it will split into 4 coulomb and 2 coulomb now 4 coulomb when it passes through the resistor it will lose 48 joules of energy now this 2 coulomb will lose 12 joule of energy when it passes or when it 
crosses the resistor and since we have considered that this wires are having no internal resistance so when it crosses the resistor from here to here they don't require any energy to come in once again six coulomb charge they come out in one second they complete the round and come back six coulomb charge draws 72 joules of energy which divides into four coulomb and two coulomb now this four coulomb charge when it passes through three ohm resistor it loses 48 joules of energy and two coulomb charge when it passes through the six ohm resistor it loses 12 joule of energy people so that means if you add up you get this as 72 so 72 joules of energy received from the battery 72 joules lost again the cycle repeats this whole process takes place in one second so in one second six coulomb charge they receive 72 joules of energy when they again come back the energy is over again they take the 72 joules of energy again they come back they lose their energy so in this way the they take the energy from the battery which is provided by the chemical reactions inside the battery now how did i know that this is 48 joule people because one coulomb charge requires 12 joule of energy to complete the process so here we have four coulomb so 12 fours are 48 here 12 twos are 24 so actually i have made a small mistake over here people it is 24 over here because two coulomb charges are over here so if you add up you get 72 so guys hopefully you have enjoyed this explanation please do comment if you have any doubts in the comment section thank you for watching the video